Today, I'm gonna show you all how to make this totally awesome and overly complicated circle cutting jig. It's actually really not that complicated, but it is awesome. But first things first, I need to give credit where credit is due. This is not my original design or idea. There are lots of different circle cutting jigs, but this specific design is from Lynn over at the Darby Norvar workshop channel. So I'll put a link right here that you can click to view Lynn's video on building her jig, but stick around to see how I build mine. Now I started building this jig and everything was going really smoothly until I realized that the Laguna bandsaw that Lynn has has different tabletop measurements than my Grizzly. But it's not the end of the world, this ply was really cheap and bowed out and I was already considering making a second one just so I can improve a couple things. I don't have any half inch material laying around so I'm going to be using 3 quarter inch MDF for all the parts of this. So here's a list of Lynn's measurements and I'm going to go ahead and tell you guys along the way what my altered measurements are going to be to fit that specific bandsaw. So if you have the Grizzly bandsaw, well this just may be the greatest day of your life. And if you don't, you have a bit of math to do. The first cut is going to be piece A and it's going to measure 23 inches by 15. So I just finished doing the measurements for the second layer of MDF that's going to go on top of this. This is where all the moving parts and important pieces are going to be at. So essentially cut A that we just made is a base and on top of this we want to divide it into three pieces. We want a 2 inch wide strip here a 12 inch wide strip here and a 9 inch wide strip here. And all those measurements will be by 15 inches in length to match up the 15 inch base. But there's one very important thing that we really need to pay attention to and that is on the 2 inch strip later on we're going to cut a quarter inch rabbit on each side. So to compensate for that amount of thickness lost we need to add a half an inch to the width of that strip. So really the middle strip will measure 2 and a half inches wide. Here at my router table, I've set myself up with a quarter inch straight bit and I've raised it three eighths of an inch high. The bit is a quarter inch out from the fence, so I'm gonna cut quarter inch in and three eighths inch high on two sides of piece D. And pieces C and D are gonna get it on only one side each. This is gonna create a sliding T track so that we can adjust how big of a circle we want. You can see here how the sliding track works. I got a nice good fit and I actually had to go back and trim just a little bit higher because it was a little tight. So I have my three pieces on the base all positioned so I get a nice fit with the track and I'm going to go ahead, pre-drill and screw first, then I'm going to unscrew everything, lay down some glue and then do a final screwing because glue is a lubricant so it's going to slide around a lot and it'll be a lot easier to line everything up so that this track fits well if I screw first. <laughs> I've cut out this piece of wood, just have a piece of plywood here and it fits nice and tight into my miter slot. I've also stacked some washers inside the miter slot and ran two lines of masking tape so I don't get wood glue on my bandsaw table. And now I'm going to go ahead and glue the miter track to the bottom of the slide. Let's go ahead and put it on like so. I drilled a 3 8 inch hole at the top just an inch down from the sliding track and I'm going to glue in a dowel to be used as the pin. I'm just going to go ahead and glue this down right there with medium CA glue. I have the sled positioned on the bandsaw table so that the center of that sliding track is in line with the blade. I'm going to go ahead and glue down a stop so I can never push it past that point. The 
very last thing I did was drill a 3 8 inch hole on the underside, put a T-nut there as well as a knob that I made using a 5 16 inch bolt with a little piece of wood that I glued into the top to make a little star knob. That allows me to be able to adjust this to where I need it but to lock it in place so it won't move around. So to use this jig all we need to do is mark center on whatever blank we want to cut into a circle and using my 3 8 inch hole that will fit that little pin I'm just going to drill a shallow hole. Next we're just going to push the sled in until the blade cuts and the stop engages and then we're just going to slowly rotate the blank to cut a circle. And that gives me an absolutely perfect dead-on circle. I'm going to be using this jig solely for cutting up my bowl blanks now, but you can use this for all kinds of things. Anytime you need to cut up a circle, I can cut up one using this jig anywhere from a 1-inch radius all the way to a 15-inch radius. So I'd like to thank you all for watching this video. If this is your first time here, you should know that I post new wood turning videos every single Friday. So subscribe for all of that, and subscribe anyways. Tune back in next week for a new video on this channel, and I'll see you all then. Thank you for watching.